Christian Knight here for Car Player TV, and I'm with Mike Cass, who recently finished sixth in the $3,000 buy-in triple chance event. Now, first of all, tell me about what you think of this format. Well, the tr it's, every, they keep calling it a triple chance, mm -hmm. but in reality, almost everybody rebought right away, so you start with 9000 I mean, you want to have most of the people covered, so it wouldn't really make sense. I mean, some people were thinking, like, because we all discussed what you think the optimal strategy is. You know, maybe if the players to your left are rebuying and they're good, aggressive people, then maybe you wouldn't want to if the people to your right aren't. But, I mean, I can't imagine not having everybody covered and playing, like, deep stack, as deep stack as possible in mm -hmm. something like this. Well, if nobody rebought, everybody else was only playing with the first 3,000 chips, would you have... Well, you kind of want to get everybody excited by, like, throwing your chips out there. And once you did that, then everybody, most of the people, you know, they thought that they were, oh, I want to have him covered, mm -hmm. you know, so they would, like, rebuy also. That was what I did. I quickly got my chips out there, and then everybody seemed to follow. A few players kept the, kept the chip, but... You know, I wanted to be able to, you know, get max value mm -hmm. if I had a big hand, so. How did the players do who didn't uh, rebuy immediately? Um, they were, well, some of them were playing, like, pretty aggressive, just trying to get it in, which was good. I was able to, like, pick off a few short stacks that shouldn't have really been going with their hand. Mm -hmm. But other people were just playing tight and looking at it as you have three chances. But, I mean, playing tight and doing that didn't really make too much sense, I don't mm -hmm. think. So, how did your day one go? Um, my day one, I got up to 23,000 in the first level which was really good. I was really happy. And then I just started, like, really dribbling down. I, I went down to, like, to, like, 16,000. And then I lost a big flip and was down to 8. And then um, I took, like, I got moved, actually, next to uh, Eric Basebaldi, and we decided we were going to, yeah, we were both kind of had. I you know like, you guys are really good friends. Yeah. Don't know. And we both had about uh, 20 blinds. And we decided, well, let's start drinking. You know, and <laughs> we, so we went to dinner together. And we came back with uh, 20 blinds. And like the third ha third or fourth hand back, this aggressive guy opened. It was pretty funny. And it got folded to me on the button. And uh, I actually, he opened from early. And I wasn't really sure. And I folded King Jack. It was pretty marginal. And Eric went with his A7 of diamonds. And the guy snapped with two aces. And then he gave me a lot of sh for that, that I wasn't, that I didn't, you know, get knocked out there. He's like, you should have right. been out. Like, what are you doing not shoving? And it was mm -hmm. close. Like, I almost shoved, but I. Mm -hmm. I folded and... So if you would have shoved, he would have folded. Yeah, he would have folded. And then you would have been out. Yeah. <laughs> I would have bricked the board and been out, so... Yeah. Okay. I, I, it would probably... It may have been a shove, but I didn't shove and it worked out, I guess. Good timing for you. Yeah. And I was happy to get him out, so... Yeah, so then you didn't have baseball at your table. Yeah. So how did the rest of the night go? You're kind of buzzed um, at this point, or what's I, going on? <laughs> well, then I didn't have him to drink anymore, and nobody else really wanted to drink at the table, so... I actually went down to 2,500 chips. I got flush over flush and didn't get it in and was left with like four blinds late in the night. Mm -hmm. And I like, got lucky. I, had, I got in for four blinds and had somebody dominated. And then the same thing happened again. And I got up to, um, what did I close the day with? I closed the day with about, I think it was uh, 31,000. On the last hand, I picked off, uh, the second to last hand, Thomas Keller with King High. And that got me up to like 32,000, which was my peak. Right mm -hmm. at my peak at the end of the day. So. Well, tell me about that hand. You you called him with King High on the river. Uh, yeah, I had. He was playing like he had just lost the big pot, and I had King Ten of Hearts, and it was kind of a scary board. And he uh, it went. It, we check. It got checked down because I kept. The, I thought he was gonna check raise the flop because mm -hmm. he was. Um, and we check. It was like nine seven. It was nine six five. No nine six four four three. And then he led real big on the river and. After one check check on the. Flop yeah, it went check check on the flop and the turn. And then I called on the river, and he announced nine high. I wasn't sure what he meant. There was a nine out there, so I was like, he might be a little confused. It's late, so I waited, and then he flipped over 10-7 for nothing. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So what really went into you making that call? If it's a big bet, it's a lot of your chips. You know, How do you know when to pick off a bluff with King High or to raise in case he's bluffing with, like, pocket twos or something? Like well, yeah, I mean, I thought he would have checked, like, something like that. I. If you had pocket twos, it almost that would be like a decent bet there for value, possibly. Mm -hmm. Like thinking I might call it like East King High, mm -hmm. but it just felt like a bluff. And he seemed like really he had just lost a pretty big pot, and he wasn't really. It just seemed like it didn't really. I don't know. It just seemed like he was bluffing. Like, I mean, I would fold there off. I, he could easily be bluffing with the best hit, like an ace. But I thought he might re-raise me pre-flop with a hand like that. Mm -hmm. but okay. With an ace. So when you call a king ten high, what does that do for your table image? You know, people pro aren't going to Well, be yeah, everyone was pretty confused, but uh, it was basically the second to last hand of the day, so it didn't really matter, mm -hmm. like, what happened, so. And then he actually, like, seemed like he was, the very last hand, he lost, like, a huge pot. It definitely sent him, 
you know, he was pretty pissed, I guess. He lost a huge pot, actually busted on the last end of the day oh, okay. after that. Well, tell me your path on that final day to the final table. Okay, well, on day two or day three, you mean? Uh, day three, because you guys okay. played through. You guys didn't have a, a separate day for the final table, right? Well, we had a day two and then a day three. We, there were three days. But, uh, yeah, I guess day three, I came in a little bit under average, and I actually got pretty lucky early. I raised King, Queen of Diamonds, and this kid that I was playing pretty aggressive the day before, and I'd seen him three bet really light, early position raises, and he three bet me. I decided to go on my King, Queen of Diamonds, and he snapped with aces. I wished him luck, and I flopped him. Uh, I didn't flop him dead. It was ace, ten, jack, so I had to sweat him filling up. Mm -hmm. Should have been, you know, nine, ten, jack, so right. I'd be happy, but, you know. <laughs> It worked out, eight and a six, so he wasn't too happy after that. And uh, so that set me like going, and then I won a flip. I raised ace-queen in the, on the bottom in the small blind, re-raised, basically moving in. I snap put it in. He had uh, two eights, and I flopped an ace, so I was running pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, to get, we were 11 handed now, and then I got it in ace-king against ace-ten and held. So that brought us to the final table, to ten. Okay. Now... I mean, when you made that move with King Queen, those are the kinds of things that you do have to do. Even if you're, you know, you could be wrong like you were that time, but isn't it essential to, to play back at those really aggressive players? Um, yeah. I mean, hopefully your reads are right. I couldn't have been more wrong there, but mm -hmm. it worked out. But yeah, you can't, you know, like, it kind of was the spot. Like, I was sure he would, he, it just felt like he was going to three-bet me. So, I, you know, it didn't really make sense to open and fold when I think the person's going to three-bet me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't. I didn't realize, I mean, I clearly made a bad read, but, uh, I mean, a lot of times you're right there. Mm -hmm. Like, he, w he was three-betting light the day before. Mm -hmm. I wasn't actually playing with him, but I was watching the other table a little bit, and I saw he showed down a hand where he had three-bet really light and early position raised, so mm -hmm. I knew he was capable of that, so. When I talked to Eric Basebaldi, uh, when we talked about resealing, he, he said that one of the things is if you kind of make up in your mind, if you know if this person does this in a certain spot, like, if you already make it up, it makes yeah. it easy for you to make that Yeah, move. of course. You want to, like, if you're kind of visualizing what's going on before it happens. So, like, there was kind of a hand at the final table where that, that kind of happened. And, again, I put it in bed and got lucky. But, yeah. <laughs> well, tell me, about, tell me about your demise. What happened to um, put you in the sixth place? We, we went into, I went into the final table. I had a slight chip lead. And I thought that it was going to play out. I was going to kind of feel out the table. But it seemed like everybody was, even though it wasn't a lot of really big names, it felt like everybody I was playing pretty well for the most part, and um, I, I thought my seat was okay. There were a lot of chips behind me, and early, the first two hands, people busted right away, so we were eight-handed, mm -hmm. and then we played for like two and a half hours without anybody getting knocked out, so it was kind of like, the you know, everybody was starting to get short, mm -hmm. and then um, I was raising a decent amount of hands. I thought people were going to, I really didn't get much resistance. Nobody was really three-betting me or four-betting me when I was three-betting, so things were going really well, and two people to my right busted, which was exactly what I wanted, so I can get better position on uh, Jason Dewitt and uh, Jason Somerville, which was, you know, ideal. I thought, mm -hmm. and I basically, uh, when we were the first really big pot I played, when we were uh, seven-handed against, Car I raised under the gun with King Queen of Diamonds again, and that seems to be my favorite hand. <laughs> and uh, Carva, uh, who is it? Um, what's his name? Um, Cargo Holt. He uh, moved in from the from the big blind. Uh, from the, yeah, from the uh, big blind. And I thought for like five or six minutes, and it just felt like it was at the end of the level. And I had seen him like look up at the clock before the hand, and I had raised under the gun a lot. And it, the first two, like the two times before that, it seemed like he thought about making a move, mm -hmm. and I really just wasn't sure. It was like really close to my head, one of the toughest spots. And I actually found a call, and he showed me ace king of hearts, and I flop uh, queen king king. So that was, you know, a decent flop. <laughs> and I held there. So now I was. Oh, like at two million, and then we uh, basically played a while six-handed, and I lost I lost the hand uh, where I had top pair uh, king jack on king high, and the guy had a flush, and I played it kind of weird, and I mean I had a pretty easy river call, mm -hmm. so that brought me down a little bit. And yeah, you said you said you played it kind of slow, and when you play your hand slow, you kind of have to make those tough calls on the river, right? Because you're underrepresenting your hand. Them. Yeah, I mean, I went to, I mean, I really thought, like, I would have called him a lot lighter. I happened to have, like, top hair there. Mm -hmm. Like, the hand didn't really make much sense. I mean, the only thing that I did wrong was if I would have three-bet him, he had jack four hearts. So I don't know if he would have four-bet me, but I probably would have won the hand. But I decided to just call. That was the only time I did that, I think, at the final table.
-hmm. and I just flatted a raise, but it didn't work out. So, but and so I was down a little bit, and then I picked up Ace Queen on the button, and uh, both of the blinds they had 16 and 20 blinds, I believe, mm -hmm. and I decided that I was gonna raise call, so I raised the button with Ace Queen and small blind uh, Mike. Was his name? Uh, he moved in and I snapped and he had uh, eight, nine of spades, seven, eight of spades and I lost that pot and that brought me down to like 700,000. If I would have won, I would have been had the chip laid back at like two million. So mm -hmm. that was definitely a bump in the road, but you know, I definitely got lucky a few times. So Yeah. And then you ultimately put it in with pocket fours against pocket threes against the eventual winner, Jorg? Yeah. Um, the first two hands back from break, we were at. 25.50, I had 600,000, I had ace-queen and uh, reshoved against him, and he folded quickly, and then I had two sevens and moved in and won again, so they had to be thinking I was like, you know, I had a plan to play pretty aggressive now. I'm up to like 800,000, and uh, he raised the cutoff, and I had two fours on the button, so I, sh I moved all in, and he thought for a minute and called, and I flipped over my fours, and he immediately screamed, started cursing in <laughs> another language, so I'm like, that sounds pretty good, I guess that's twos or threes, Yeah. and uh, he had threes, and three in the door, but they did give me a little sweat at least. It came with a two and a five, mm -hmm. so Open I had the world, yeah, and brick, brick, but what can you do? Yeah. So you're looking forward to the main event? Um, yeah. Should be good. I'm hoping to last longer than four levels that I lasted last year. <laughs> what happened last year? Um, I had to fold a full house on like the fifth hand for like a quarter of my chips, so that got me sick right away. Oh, wow. Yeah, he showed that he had the uh, top boat, but... Well, at least you made a good decision. Yeah, it's once in a while I make a good decision. <laughs> it's not too often, but... No, oh, come on. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully you can carry the momentum from this event into the main event. What day are you playing? Uh, day four. Okay, cool. So we'll look for you there, and good luck in the main event. Okay, thank you very much. Chris, you're not with Mike Katz for Card Free TV.